Hey gang, welcome back to our shop bathroom build. All the wiring is done, and in the previous video, you saw us run all the drains in this bathroom. But what good are these drains if we don't have water flowing through them? That's what we're doing today. Now, I've been doing this over 40 years, and whenever we had to run water lines, it was always sweating or soldering copper lines. That other 0.1%, a little bit of threaded pipe or some glued CPVC. But my days of soldering copper are over. It all ends today. Now, when we start to run all our piping, this is our starting point right here, the three quarter that fed the old bathroom. But what are our ending points? Well, they're called stub outs. A typical bathroom might have four, six, maybe eight stub outs. Check this out. This bathroom, 18 stub outs. Plus, we got two right here for the kitchen sink on the other side of this wall. And we're gonna put a nice hose rack with hot and cold water from my buddy right on the other side of this wall. So we can drag the hose outside and have hot water to a hose to wash stuff. I think every house should have hot water to the garden hose. Yeah, and it shouldn't be at foot level. Right, we're gonna make it high so you can just walk right up to it and turn it on. Now we've been talking about all these stub outs, but what exactly is a stub out? Well, I got a bunch of them on the back of the truck. Let's go check them out. All right, welcome to the stub out tailgate. Now check it out. These are half inch stub outs. This is a three quarter stub out. This is called a drop ear 90 and these are all called male adapters. Now check this out. All of this cost just north of $450. Now don't let that throw you off right away because we're gonna make all that up in labor when it comes time to run all the pipe. Right now, if it's made of copper or brass, you know you're gonna pay bucks for it, right? Now I kinda go overkill when it comes to stub outs and I think that's because during my career, I've seen so many stub outs made without being connected to the structure. We've all been there, you go grab that angle stop and turn it off and the whole pipe moves. In fact, on this very building, the only hose bib on the whole building is loose and my friend wants us to fix it. Now, some of these stub outs, like the one for the toilet, it just needs to be in the general area so the hose can reach the tank. But some of these need to be dialed in precisely. So which ones need more love than others? Well, we're gonna show you. All right, back here in our bathroom, let's check out the toilet stub out. We're gonna use this right here and it's got this cool mounting flange. I could put it here on the stud, but it's gonna end up right behind the bowl and that's very inconvenient for the valve. If I put it over here, it's way over to the left and I need a super long hose to get there. So typically I like to come eight inches off the of center, about six inches above the floor and put it there. Now in a residential project, I always account for the height of my baseboard. If I got a tall base, I'm gonna put it higher so we're not drilling a hole through the base or notching the base for the escutcheon. On this wall, tile all the way down so we can put it anywhere we want. It's gonna be a simple matter, putting a block across here, drilling a hole in it, sticking this in from the back, securing it with some screws. We're all done and it's very strong. After we do the toilet, we're gonna to come right up here and mount two, one for hot and one for cold for our hose bib. Now these locations don't have to be very precise, but come on over here to the urinal and we have to be very precise because you're gonna connect the flush valve to the water line in the wall, and it has to mate up with the hole on top of the urinal. You have to be in the ballpark, or you're gonna be removing tile to move the water line. Now the urinal roughing is gonna be relatively simple because of the great instructions from American Standard. But come on over here to the shower. We love the shower system we bought. Well, two shower systems, right, Jordan? We love it. But the instructions, you could basically argue you're on your own. There are no instructions. Now we're gonna show you how we knock out that common no instructions problem, but for right now, let's start on this toilet wall. All right, we've got our toilet stub out in and our hose bib stub outs in, cold and hot. Now you might be asking yourself, asking us, stud pack, why is your hose bib so high? Aren't you tired of reaching over and putting a hose on a hose bib way down here and then bending over and turning it on? It's all up here now. So be the change you wanna see in the world. Now it's time for our urinal water supply line, which is three quarter. Now, 
this is what they had at the plumbing supply yard. It's a three quarter stub out, but as you can see, it doesn't have that flange on it that I really like. What I really wanted to put here was a three quarter inch drop ear 90. Remember, that's a drop ear 90. This is just a half inch version. Now they didn't have those at the plumbing supply house either, but I know where to get one now. So I'm gonna put one on the other side of this block. And then from this fitting to our flush valve, we'll need a nipple and I can make that any length I want. So we're gonna put it on the fittings we forgot list. Now, even though we don't have a fitting for this block on the other side, it still has a purpose and we're still gonna use it. My buddy Steve's gonna come by the next couple days, check out the progress, and we gotta take some precautions. That ought to do it. The next two we're gonna tackle is for the kitchen sink on the opposite side of this wall. But we got a little problem. This stub out is too short. We have the thickness of the block and the thickness of the wall, and this won't go all the way through. But Simple solution, I just cut the end off, a coupling, a short piece of copper, and a cap, and I basically just made a longer version of it. So let's solder this together. All right, that looks fantastic. Now, unfortunately, we didn't get too much done here today, but I got stuff done at three other projects. Yes, I have four projects going on right now, but don't worry, you're not missing too much on those other three, but I have to finish everything before we head to Texas. Now, because we got a late start today, we're gonna be here bright and early in the morning, knock this thing out, we'll see you then. All right, it's bright and early the next day, and Jordan and I are excited to be here and get an early start on this project. Dude, do you hear music? I don't know if I'm more upset because he's testing the strength of my floor and he doesn't trust me or he just couldn't wait to detail something in the brand new bathroom. Sick of this music, man. Now we got to get this thing out of here. All right, we got that B-Rod out of the way and I guess we're just going to have to board this place up, Jordan, after we're done so my friend can't come in here at night and or take play the around. Off. I'm, I'm thinking he's going to hang an engine hoist from our ceiling and start working on engines. I don't know. But let's get back to work. You ready? I want to start right here with these shower valves. Now to me, shower valves are a lot like ceiling fans. Ceiling fans deliver air, shower systems deliver water. But every time I hang a ceiling fan, it's different than the last one I put in, and the same goes with showers. Now we bought two shower systems from Amazon for about $470 each, and they're identical, but we are always cautiously optimistic when we buy plumbing supplies from Amazon. But when this showed up in the mail and I picked up the box, I was kind of immediately impressed because it's very heavy. All these fittings are brass and check out all the brass in the control valve. But just having all that brass wasn't enough for us. We wanted to see how well it performed because we don't want to hook it all up, have it behind the tile, and then we're disappointed with the way it performs. So we got some of the fittings, a body spray and the rain head that's going to go up above on the wall and we hooked them up to a garden hose. And let me tell you, this thing passed the test with flying colors but we're not gonna show it to you just yet. This video is about rough plumbing and getting water supply lines to all the fittings inside that box. Now we're gonna divide this shower installation into four phases. Phase one, the shower valve. Phase two, the rain head. Phase three, the body spray on a hose right here. And phase four, four powerful body jets. Let's start with the heaviest part, the control valve. Now there's our shower valve body and it is pretty heavy. And take notice of this, we have three quarter inch supply lines for our hot and our cold. And then we have half inch outlets for all of our spray features, which can all be on at the same time. That's why we have three quarter supply. With all this weight and all that water moving through it, we want it to be very well secured. So we put a piece of plywood right here. We cut it to width and fastened it to our studs with pocket screws. Now we're gonna mount the valve body to the plywood with four screws and it's gonna be very strong. Now where does it go? We got the X, we got the Y, and we got the Z. Side to side is pretty self-explanatory. We're just gonna center it on this wall. We actually talked about putting it over here so you could walk in the shower, turn the water on, and not get wet while you're waiting for hot water. But we're gonna address that later and in this shower, we're gonna put it in the middle. Now we got this dimension. If you're six foot 10, just put it higher. If you're four foot 10, put it lower. We've already determined where we want it, and it's about right there. Now the Z, in and out, that's what usually gets everybody. 
if this is too far out and you put your trim ring on, you're going to have a big gap. And if it's too far back, the trim ring won't even fit. Now let's talk about that side to side dimension first. We actually already installed this one and here's how easy it was. I simply pulled my tape from the corner at 22 inches because that was about the middle for us and I made that mark right there. Then I pulled 22 inches from the other side and I made that mark on the left. The line in between those two is the exact center of our shower opening and we lined up our outlet with that, screwed it to the block. And to get the height, we just moved this up and down like we talked about before to a height that was comfortable for us and our friends who are gonna be using this shower. And for us, that number was 40 inches to the center of our inlets and we lined it up, screwed it to the block. It was as easy as that. Now let's talk about that pesky Z dimension back and forth, right? Here's our cover plate, and they were so nice, they even put my age right there on there. Look at that, bud. Nice, huh? Now, there are no fasteners in this. We have an O-ring here, here, and here, and it simply presses on, and it stays. It's pretty tight fit for a nice, clean look. But here's what's got to happen. Your tile has got to line up with the back, or you'll have a gap. Or worse, like we talked about before, this thing's going to be way out here. So we took a lot of time and we measured the dimension between the back of our plate here and the face of our stud to give us room for backer board, thin set, and the tile. So that gives us a rough idea of where this needs to be. And then we erred on the side of this being out too far. And here's why. You see this part right here? See how it's thinner around the perimeter? About a half an inch back. And these are longer inside. So imagine our faceplate is our tile, and this blue case is sticking out about that much. All we have to do is trim that off, even with our tile, and then because we have all this depth on these knobs, this will simply slide on further, and you'll see a little bit more right here, but that's fine, because we'll be nice and tight against the tile here. So it just goes to show you how much thought goes into installing a shower, valve, body, and the trim when we don't even have water lines or insulation. We just don't want to get in the way of our future self. Now, since we already have this one installed, as you can see, we turned our laser on and it's lined up right in the middle of that valve stem. So we're just going to go to the other side and mount the other one at exactly the same height. All right, here's how we did the shower arm, drop ear 90, just like that, secured to a two by four, screwed in from each stud. And as you can see, we have our laser set up on the vertical. It's lined up with the middle of the valve stem and we're on the middle of our drop ear 90. Now on the Z dimension, Here's what we did. Here's our shower arm. I'm gonna put it in here real quick for you. So on the Z dimension, if I'm too far back with this, this is gonna slide and cover any potential gap. But if I'm too far forward, this is gonna slide back to the tile and now we got a gap. So measure twice, measure three times and get your Z dimension right where you need it. Body sprays, the exact same thing. A nice strong block and our drop ear 90 is screwed to the block. On X marks the spot, piece of cake. All right, guys, the final piece of our shower installation jigsaw puzzle is complete. We have our four drop ear 90s installed for our four body jets. Now check this out. I'm going to just rough measurement here. We're at 34 and 54 above our finished floor. And that works good for us. And it's the same thing as all the rest, right? Just like we put this on a piece of plywood with pocket screws, we did the same thing here. Check it out. That thing is very strong. You could probably hang on that drop ear 90. Now, do you guys remember when we were talking about the shower head and we had all kind of adjustment in that and even the spray body right here? Well, check this out. On these body jets, we basically have zero adjustment. I'm going to pull this discussion forward and check it out. We have 15 sixteenths, maybe an inch right there between the face of the stud and the back of that discussion. That's plenty of room for our backer board and our tile and our thin set. And here's the deal. If this drop ear 90 is too far back, you'll never get this started in the threads. And if it's too far forward, it's gonna look like that. Now this configuration works great for us, but you can do whatever you want in your shower. Now these are body jets and they're gonna help rinse the soap off. But when we hook this up to the garden hose, that thing is powerful and it's gonna give us a little massage. So when I get home from the gym, these jets are gonna massage my chest, help relieve those muscles, and I can turn around, hit my back, my lats, and my neck. That's right, gang, I said I've been going to the gym. I've been reading your comments the last couple of years about how I'm out of breath and everything. So I joined your local gym and they are wiping me out every morning. I've already been able to tell a huge difference and I think Jordan has too even. Yeah. And not only have I been going to the gym, I read a lot of your comments about all the spots on my face. So I went to a dermatologist and she dusted me off. Can you tell? Yeah, it looks good. Much better, huh? Yeah. So these two jets are responsible for the upper body and these two guys right here are for these two guys.
<laughs> now, before we can start running PEX for the very first time, something we're really excited about, we have to put our male adapters on that shower valve body. You probably already noticed we did them on this one. We've got two three quarters to install for our water inlet, hot and cold. And we have three half inch male adapters, one for the shower, one for the sprays, one for the jets. And we also want to come down here and we have one more solder joint to complete. We're going to solder this male adapter onto our three quarter inch supply line for the whole bathroom and then transition to PEX. We're good to go. All right, the shutoff valve is installed. The water is back on the street, no leaks. We just gotta be careful, Jordan, that we don't trip that handle by accident or we're gonna take a shower before it's time. All right, we are finally ready to start running some water lines in that old bathroom. We've been waiting weeks and weeks for this step. We're super excited to get on board the PEX train and we have a pretty sick tool to do it with. So a couple of weeks ago, we were in contact with Milwaukee Tools and they said, you know what, Stud Pack? We like your stuff, so we're gonna send you a tool. We're gonna see how you guys do. So guys, please support the video. Smash the crap out of that like button. So it just made sense to get a tool that would help us to install our PEX A or Upanor plumbing and check it out. Here's what they sent us. It's their M12 fuel expander tool. They call it the Pro Expander Kit, half inch to one inch PEX. This is gonna be perfect for us. Let's bust it open and see what's inside. Check it out, gang. There's that Milwaukee quality we all love. Three expander dies, two batteries, a charger, a grease because it's metal on metal. Even got a belt hook. I love that. I say we put the half inch expander on here and let's go install our first piece of PEX. All right, we've got our PEX cut to length. We've got our expander ring on there. Tools ready to go. Let's check it out. This is so cool, man. I've seen this tons of time online, but I have never actually used one. I think we're there? Yeah. That is sweet. All right, go, 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 go. I'm home. Boom. Check that out. Go ahead. Now that, now that expander head is rotating as it's expanding the pec, so I don't need to rotate the tube or the fitting. Well, we got this whole battle. Huh? Can you pull it off? No. Oh my God. No. What a great design. What a great tool. I'm so excited. You know what? This is going to go so fast, Jordan. This is going to be an early day. I say we head to uh, Texas after this. Check out the stud pack house. What do you say? Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm holding the camera with two hands. <laughs> All right, guys, it is just a little bit later. And as you can see, Jordan and I have already run some of the PEX A tubing. We wanted to take this guy for a little test drive and learn all the nuances of this new system to us. And what an incredible system it is. This tool paired along with this pipe and the fittings and the collars makes it so easy. So easy, in fact, that Jordan and I keep thinking that we're forgetting a critical step in the installation of our plumbing. And now we're ready to run the hot water side. And it only took Jordan and I about five to 10 minutes to get the hang of using this tool. Now we can fly and show you guys what a great system it is. Dude, why did we wait so long? One more. Go, go, go. Nice. All right, there it is. A fully pexed up, fully functional, well, when we turn the shower on, shower system. Check it out. I'm gonna push the middle button. It's gonna allow water to come up this center pipe out the rain head. You wanna use the body jets? Push this left hand button, water's gonna come out here. Boom, we did it like an H pattern. So all these are equal length pipe. So hopefully we have balanced pressure right there. And if you wanna use the sprayer on the hose, you press that button. Now we wanted to get the other side of the shower done, but even though I bought every kind of fitting there was, and then twice the number I thought I would need, I still ran out. Isn't that how it goes? So we need a fitting right up here. So we're gonna put that on the fittings we forgot list. 
And another awesome tool that I started using for the first time today, based on your comments, was a spider set of hole saws. And you saw how easily it worked in the video. Check it out. You got all kinds of different sizes of hole saws. You have a carbide bit pilot drill and a regular twist drill pilot drill. Chuck the hole saw in your drill. When you're done, you press the little spider button, pull that back, and the core stays right here. You just pull it off, throw it away, or as we did, throw it all over the floor. <laughs> so thanks so much for the recommendation for the spider hole saw kit. Awesome product. Alrighty guys, we got a whole lot done in this video. Jordan and I are super excited to have begun working with the PEX. And as you can see on the floor, we are now fully invested, but that's fine because we absolutely love the system. Once again, a huge shout out to the Milwaukee team for sending us this tool. We absolutely love it and we're gonna get a ton of use out of it. So just a few more PEX fittings and Jordan and I can finish this shower system and I'm sure that we can knock it out in about 30 minutes, maybe an hour, but it's gonna go very quickly. The next time you guys are gonna see us is at the Stud Pack House. So expand that like button for us, then smash it, drop a comment, ask a question, please subscribe, and we'll see you on the very next Stud Pack video.